it's crazy to see some powers that we think start to grow and then all of a sudden they get destroyed or a team member gets destroyed and that kind of pulls down um, the entire group, which which is very interesting with this team mechanic. It's stuff that, like, I think that powers that we're predicting to be kind of these remaining you know, sources of strength for the entire campaign can fall at any second. So let's go ahead and try to figure out what kind of wars are going on. I think that there have been, there's been kind of a stabilization of the world in some somewhat. I, I think that, I mean, it's hard to say that because... Well, there's definitely certainly not as many wars. That that last time I checked on the Diplomacy Overview screen, it was insane. And it's still pretty crazy. But luckily, you know, some civs have been destroyed, which is honestly uh, the best thing for me as, as kind of this, like, uh, announcer sort of person because, geez, it was so confusing to keep up with it all. Uh, so right now we have just China and Korea at war with Germany, Austria, Rome, which they don't really have to worry about too much, uh, Poland, Russia, the Ottomans. So they don't have to worry about that either. Those are both people on the uh, western side of the hemisphere, so China's on the eastern. I don't think they really need to feel too threatened by that. Uh, the natives aren't at war with anybody. Uh, the African powers are not at war with anybody. And we have Poland. Okay, so really there's nothing going on. Technically there are a few wars, but there's nothing in terms of fronts um, at the at the at the there's no possible fronts that that might be taken here. I don't think. Uh, what do we, what was, what's our spy saying? What do we see? The Mayans plotting against the Chinese. Uh, I'm sure this won't last. This small moment of peace will not last for very long. Um, actually, no. I should have taken that back. Austria can technically go after Korea or China, but that is I think the only thing that we could see. Yes, I, I guess the Ottomans could go after Washington, the the the, the now Chinese city, uh, because America has lost their capital. So like I said in the intro, I mean, this this campaign has been so much fun, and so, it's just insanity. Uh, boom, okay, so clearly there is a coalition now that is formed. That's the third team to declare war on China and Korea. Um, if no one else jumps on board, then I think that it's safe to say that either Korea will fall, or China is going to lose a lot of their, their cities. Uh, I think that's pretty safe to say. Um, take note of the like massive power that is growing in the northwest. Or, I'm sorry, the southwest of this map. Germany is is at this point, I think, almost unstoppable. Their empire is big, so it's possible for them to lose cities. But because they're cornered off uh, by kind of this the southern part of the map, they're pretty safe. They need to worry. I mean, they're starting to border more people. But then again, even Rome is to the north, so Ro Germany is very very safe. I'd say. Because uh, they don't really have to worry about, you know, north of Fez because Rome's up here. Eventually Morocco will get taken over. Um, right now, the Ottomans and the Russians, they really need to take out, they need to take out Augustus. They need to start taking northern cities. They need to take Rome for sure, the, the capital that is. Um, it would have helped if Catherine eventually took, it, took out the Mayans. That's a big problem. If Catherine had taken out the Mayans, they'd be in a much better spot. I don't think that they're going to be able to, 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 to defeat the Germans and the Romans and the Austrians because they the, the Catherine's always going to have to worry about this front against the Mayans. The Ottomans maybe might be in a better situation. I'd say they definitely are. But now that they're expanding more towards the east, they do need to worry about China. China's still something I think that they need to worry about. Um, the Ottomans, oh, okay, well, there you go. The Ottomans have made a friendship with, with the Mayans, but that doesn't really matter. We need to see the Russians and the Mayans making a friendship. Uh, okay, so there that goes. Uh, that friendship didn't even matter. So we will be seeing. So who declared the war? Okay, so this is the war that I predicted in the last video. I just didn't think it was going to happen this early, and I didn't think it was going to happen like this. Um, so the natives, so first of all, I think the Mayans are going to distract Catherine quite a bit. Um, so it will mainly be the Ottomans. The Ottomans, I think, are lacking a military unit. Military units, definitely. Uh, Russia might just say, screw it, and just rush after Rome, and, and Russia might lose a few of their cities to the Inca. I'm sorry, to the Mayans. But we will see. The Germans will probably attack Warsaw, because that's really their only front. It looks like that's their only front. The Polish were in the middle of, I think, moving through Ottoman territory to fight the uh, Chinese. But I don't know if that's going to happen either. We'll see if more wars break out. I don't really have a prediction here at all because I mean, my only prediction is I think that Germany will for sure continue to, to be a powerful force. Bam. Oh my gosh. He dominated this by almost 2,000 more hammers. So he's going to have 100% more tourism 
for 20 turns, 3 happiness, uh, and 30, sta 30 influence with city states, which doesn't matter. But he actually needed that happiness, I'm sure. We should be checking in on happiness, actually. This is an interesting map because there's a lack of luxuries. So we are seeing barbarians pop up. We are seeing quite a bit of that. Boom. The Inca will, I think, take over the Korean capital. Okay. Embargo of China. Embargo of America. We'll see if that works out for them. Germany has built the Eiffel Tower. And when did the Incas move? Right here. Bam. So they didn't take it over yet. I think the Austrians could technically steal this away, can't they? Uh, I don't remember if... I think they're still at war. So pretty much everyone's going to be embargoed. We knew that. China's plotting against America. Um, that doesn't really matter. Boom. That went to Austria. Wow. I'm, I'm surprised that that went to Austria. So they, I mean, there is a, no, there's no border. Germany has, no, nah, they do have a border. Germany needs to keep that in mind. There's a lot of mil, I mean, people are, they need to rebuild their militaries. I, it looks like just kind of roaming around the, the map, roaming around the map as I go over Rome. Um, there really seems to be kind of a lack of military military power from a lot of nations because there's just been wars constant wars going on over and over again uh we have the zulu now going after oh oh the zulu might take back this take back the cities maybe and morocco might be destroyed technically actually that that is i think what's going to happen morocco will probably be destroyed and germany's going to have to defend itself because they are going to be fighting a war against all of their fronts they have to fight against Morocco. They have to fight against Poland. They have to fight against the Canadians. Luckily for them, um, th this is what this team needed to do. The Russians, the Ottomans, the Polish, this is what they absolutely needed to do. They needed to kick out the Romans. That wasn't going to be that difficult. They need to cross their fingers that Austria eventually falls. I think they will eventually lose power. I don't see the Austrians holding on to these cities. Not with the Inca there in the corner. I think that's too strong. They're, they're very, very good. The natives have shown at least the natives in the corner, because the Aztecs were right in the middle of the map, have shown that it's very hard to take them over. Especially the Mayans here in, the, in, in, in this kind of rough terrain, hilly region. Um, the Mayans have denounced Canada. And bam. So if the capital falls here, that would be a huge loss for Augustus and his team. And if there is no peace, so Germany is focused on, on destroying Morocco, which they will. We'll see if they take over Susa. The, Canadi the Canadians kind of showing a little bit of a threat, but not by much. Uh, Kremlin has been built more than like, yeah, in Warsaw. That's how we can find out. I need to be clicking on those notifications more just so I know exactly what city. Like for the for an instance, the Forbidden Palace, always a very crucial wonder. We need to keep that in mind. Bam, right there. This is where I think the Austrians are going to lose a lot, of the, a lot of their strength. The Inca will, they already did. The Inca already took this back. So, Bam. Uh, this, this is where we, we see both of those, I think, lose a lot of power. And imagine if it's just a really powerful Germany. What if the world's just left with a really powerful Germany and Rome loses, you know, most of it? I, I don't think Rome is going to be destroyed here. I don't think that's possible because Germany is now, they have an immediate border with Rome so they can immediately protect. See, this is the problem. If in the future, if Rome stays this strong, uh, now that they have a border with Bismarck himself, Germany will be able to defend him. So, really, the Russians and the Ottomans need to do everything they can right now to take over as many cities away from Augustus as he can. Uh, and, and, and the capital has not fallen yet. The Roman capital has not fallen yet, which is not good. But they still took away some cities. Boom. Morocco will be destroyed. Uh, we also see Canada. Canada is captured. Ooh, it has been captured back, though. Okay. Yeah, and Germany's brought in reinforcements. That's what's going to be interesting about this, especially on a TSL, when there is that nation that is like super snowballing and they're very big because they will have to fight multi-front wars. The only thing that could bring down a big nation like this. Like imagine, for instance, the previous campaign. Imagine if someone like France had to deal with that European uh, kind of coalition that we always imagined. Imagine if uh, the UK, Spain, um, and Korea were on a team. And Denmark, even. Remember Denmark over there? They were hiding in Scandinavia. But still, if they all declared war, would they be able to defeat France? Let's 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 forget about like the very end of the campaign when France had a unit on every single tile. And let's think about 
when France was still somewhat weak, still, you know, they still had to deal with maybe Russia. What if Russia was still involved? Russia was still alive before France had backstabbed Russia with Korea. I, I just think that this this is going to be really, really fun, and everything is very unpredictable. So lots of repeals going on, I think, and that is because of the teams. That's why. That's where we've seen so many repeals. Bam. So uh, Morocco has been destroyed, and the Polish are going to have to worry because they have to now immediately deal with the Germans who are going after them. The Canadians doing a great job, though, at putting their own pressure on Bismarck. So the Germans are only having to deal with two fronts now, the front against the Canadians and the front against the Polish. This is going to completely halt the Polish progress that they were making against the Romans. The Ottomans and the, and the Russians need to move fast. They, I, think, I think the Ottomans will take over Rome, it looks like. Germany's captured it back, though. This eastern front keeps going back and forth. Um, when do the Ottomans process their turn? And when they do, can they, can they take this over? Bam. Yes, they did. That's big. That's big. They lost their capital. That's a huge deal. But I think that is going to be it. I think Rome will survive. Um, let's check on the Canadians. The Canadians are going to push forward. And look at this. The Germans have no reinforcements. They might have to back away from this front. Even though they took away this Polish city that was formerly Roman. Oh, boom. Poland took it back. They, they need to back away from Poland, and they need to defend against the Canadians, because the Canadians have nothing to lose here. Canadians are pretty much by themselves, because America's done. Um, will Korea fall? That's the next question. Austria hasn't really had to deal with sieges from Austria to the north. Germany's taking the city back. Poland has no chance of uh, recapturing that, because they've got no melee unit nearby. Germany doesn't even care that I think Canada, Canada's going to make some more progress. These cities don't have very high city defense. Look at that. 58, 62. It will get higher eventually as they approach more, uh, you know, traditional German cities that they've had for a lot longer. But we'll see. Ooh, you got lucky. Ooh, you got lucky, Germany. The, Can the Canadians were coming after you. Coming after you. Okay, so uh, the Russians no longer have to worry about the Mayans. And that is it for the Native American peace deal. That's the only results uh, that will occur there. Antium might be under siege soon. But I think Poland might be completely destroyed here. They now, like I said, that's a huge deal. The fact that, oh, you pieced out. Ooh, so now the borders are going to get more interesting. The Ottomans might be going after uh, Washington soon to destroy New York. And we also have the natives going after America and Canada. But pretty much it's just Canada. I think it's safe to say it's just Canada, and it's kind of just the Zulu, even if you want to... I don't know if we can even count the Zulu. I don't know. We'll see. Still needs to be a few more sieves to destroy to make this a little bit more simple. I mean, it's it's pretty... It's getting very simple to, to kind of watch now. That's why I was kind of confused in the beginning, the beginning of the campaign. That's the only reason why I have considered doing going down to two teams instead of three teams. I understand why we might not want to. Of course, we can do lots of experiments with that. Um, of course we, we would, we would do like, like I'm, I'm not super on board with going just like f teams of five. I think that's kind of too crazy, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I think it's a possibility. Um, it really depends. Like my biggest thing right now, and I should be talking about this. I should be talking about this at the end of the series. Cause that's when I like to really gather, uh, up your guys' opinions and, and see what you guys are thinking. But I'll ask now, like my biggest fear with team TSL is how will I, kind of get the teams how will i um how will i configure the teams i do not think it's there's a lot of people suggesting and i don't know why it's i don't think it's a good idea at all to put in all of europe in a team and all of africa into into a team I, I don't think that sounds like i don't think that sounds entertaining at all i mean i'm not saying i won't do it but on on in my head like putting all of latin america and north america like put, putting them into continents that doesn't sound like a good idea that that sounds i don't know but i don't know but um, that's just my opinion. I think it needs to be more... I, I think the teams need to be more, like, far away. I don't have a justification for why I would team these two together, but, like, for instance, like, you know, team the UK with the Ottomans or something like that. Something where we can look at two different parts of the map. If we have all of Europe on the same team, then there's no reason to really look at... I mean, there's only going to be a few places we're going to uh, look at. I, th I For now, and I don't think this is, like, the best thing to be doing. Look at this. Just road gore. 
crazy road gore. Um, for now, I, I honestly think, and I don't know, necessarily want to do this yet, is just making random teams, pulling names out of a hat and putting people in teams. I'd like to do some sort of historical teams, uh, team alliances, but at, the, at this point, I think it'd be better to do and just like an England, Mongolian, Zulu alliance versus the Babylonians, the French or the French or whatever. Um, I I mean that I think that's better than just putting everybody in the same continent on a team, you know. But I don't really like either one of those ideas, to be honest. I'd like to find some sort of way to um, justify why I'm putting certain certain team members together. But you know, we'll see. And I know that everyone wants me to do like the World War II scenario. I I'll do that, but I don't think that that's what I want to do next. I I don't exactly know if that is going to be the most entertaining just yet. I, I really want to do, I want to really want to go back to like an almost 43, uh, you know, 43 Civ TSL with, with World War II. I mean, you know, who we really, who can we really watch? I don't think we can really watch that much. Um, you know, only a handful of maybe 10, 10, 12 nations. So I, I really don't think it's going to be that entertaining, but you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll eventually do it because it's, it's being asked for, but I don't know. This is just me rambling about like, you know, my fears with TSL teams and just kind of to get your guys' opinion on on where we can go with it. Um, like I said, I just don't know how I can configure the teams. Uh, I mean, we could do small regional, like we could put Portugal and Spain in Iberia on the same team. I don't want to put all of Europe on the same team, but, you know, Portugal and, and Spain on the same team. And uh, I don't know. I think it'd be, I mean, maybe the UK and the Celts on the same team, something, but I don't know. And that's the, obviously if we were going to go for teams of two, um, I, I think that it would be better to put one team, one team from one continent with another team on another continent. That way the, the wars are way more, way more global, I guess, you know, like Germany and J Japan in World War II, you know what I mean? So I think that it might be weird in the beginning of the campaign, but at the end it'd be very entertaining. Anyways. That is me rambling. Uh, I don't think there's any wars going on, which is very nice because I, I don't have to... I can I can talk to you guys about this. Uh, Rome will probably not lose any cities, any more cities, which is kind of a bad thing, to be honest, for the Russian-Ottoman-Polish alliance because they desperately needed to destroy Rome here. Because Rome hasn't been destroyed, because Austria hasn't been destroyed... Oh, they did lose a city. The Zulu did take back uh, Nobamba, and they might take it back even more. Let's see, we're nearing turn 400. I think it, it'd be a good time to look at the info addicts, probably when we come back in the next video. Yep, they're going to go after Busan here. And the northern eastern part of this map has been completely, just complete mess. Very, very big mess. Oh, Canada? Is Canada? Yeah, Canada is at war with the Ottomans. That's right. Man, Canada has been a good friend defending America even though America's, you know, barely hobbling around. I mean, Canada, both Canada and... Do you notice how both Canada and Washington uh, didn't even defend England? I understand they were pretty far away from them, but it was kind of funny that England was just pretty much by themselves. And I've been calling this team, this, like, the English colonial team. Anyways, I don't know. Rambling video. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments section below about the, the, the ways, the methods we could use to maybe team some teams together uh, in future TSL AI-only battles with teams. <laughs> too many teams uh and uh yeah so anyways guys thanks so much for watching we'll check out the info addicts in the next video i will see you guys next time